And as always, I started uh, videotaping kind of late. And yeah, it's got uh, four Phillips screws in it. And that's the part that goes in the front grill. And in the front plastic, the front grill has uh, six screws in it. All right, and there's two of those plastic rivets on each side. So take out those uh, six uh, Torx 25 bits and the four plastic things and take the hood off because the hood kind of holds the front end on and uh, the whole front end will come off. The instructions are uh, pretty bad on this thing. What it says is uh, install the winch mounts first, locate in chassis and fasten with four three eighths inch bolts. Doesn't really show you, tell you how or anything. So here's the you two pieces that are like this that are opposite to each other. And I was trying to figure out where they go. And best I can figure, I got one of them. It's not tightened or anything, but I got one of them that's right behind here. So it's right here. All right, then there's some holes back there to bolt in. So I take it that's where it goes. I guess we'll find out. And uh, I need to put the other one back in there. So it's going to go tapered. Tapered end of the bracket in with the flat spot up here. So we'll go back in there like that. I'll be bolted on right there. Okay, so what I did was I uh, got these kind of snugged. They weren't totally tight, but the uh, bolts that hold the back of this thing on that are back here, they're uh, slotted in the metal here. So I figure that uh, that will slide back and forth or needs to slide back and forth. So I got the front ones pretty much snug. And I put the these back ones in and tightened them all the way down. And then I tightened these front ones up, up the rest of the way. So now I got all four of those bolts in. Next part of the instruction says to uh, install the winch to the winch mounts using uh, the bolts that came with the winch and the four lock washers as included. The lock washer comment's kind of funny because uh, the, the part for the brackets for the mount says to fasten with cap screws, which there's not cap screws, they're regular bolts, and four lock washers. There are no lock washers that came with, with the mount, only uh, nylock, self-locking nuts. So that's kind of the, the hardware I got with it was nylocks and bolts, and they're all the same. No mention as to which side the washers go on, so I put the washers on the piece of metal it's thinnest on that side so the bracket itself was thicker so I put the washers on this side and I also held the back and tightened it up from this from this side so this is a side that I actually had to turn I know normally the washer would go underneath the nut and the nut is tightened but because of uh, how much space or there isn't there I just went ahead and tightened it up uh, from the outside so all right so the next part is to get the winch and set the winch in there again there's not a whole lot of uh, instructions here no diagrams or anything so we'll see how that goes. All right, so here's the Viper 3,500 pound winch. All right, so I'm going to uh, cut that cable off and see if I can get a little bit of uh, synthetic rope to coil out. But from what I've seen, it should be mounted as it sits on the ground inside of there. So the, the uh, synthetic cord is actually going to come off the bottom of this. And... There's a fair lead bracket that will bolt on there to actually hold the fair lead. So the winch will be on top of these bars up there, wrapping off the bottom. So I want to go ahead and coil some of the some of the rope off now so I can feed it through so I'm not fighting with it later on. All right, I've got the winch set in there and I've uh, fed the cord down here through where the, the, the fair lead holder is going to go. And uh, something to note here, something I read a few times is you need to do something about the radiator hose. You're going to need to have to wrap it in something or tie it out of the way or something because it's going to be pretty much right on top of uh, that bolt there. All right, so I checked and the bolts in there are half inch. Check before I put them in there. So now I'm going to uh, put the four bolts in the bottom with lock washers and tighten them up. All right, so now it says to install the fair lead bracket, remove the winch cover, and again, I took the whole front end off already. So I don't need to do that. 
and they're not. My, my uh, winch cover wasn't uh, Torx screws; they were regular Phillips. It's all the fair lead bracket to the chassis, and then the fair lead to the bracket with three eight sixteen three quarter cap screws. Again, no cap screws, just the regular bolts. Sure, the winch is oriented so the cable comes off the bottom side of the spool. Tighten assembly after all cap screws are installed. Route the cable through the fair lead and attach the hook. Put the winch clutch on free spool setting, manually free the cable and engage the winch clutch. All right, so we need to put the bracket on and the fair lead on, and, uh, and we'll go from there again. The bracket is going to bolt. Right on there, it almost looks like it's set up, so this is supposed to be a fair lead bracket, but fair lead bracket is going to bolt on there, and then I've got the fair lead for my uh, synthetic winch. I'll put that on there. All right, those four bolts weren't any fun. I put it with the nuts facing up on the top, and on the bottom, it seems like everything's far enough out of the way that uh, nothing's going to chafe. I'm a little worried about this piece of metal, which is part of the ATV, with that chafing on uh, my rope. I wish they uh, made some sort of a rubber grommet or something to go in there to keep the rope from rubbing on that, but I guess we'll see. All right, let me get the instructions. Oops, I need to put the fair lead on still. So let me do that. I almost forgot uh, when I was trying to get the... Uh, nut on the back of this cap screw i went to spin it I actually flip one off and it went down inside there so i had to get a different nut to put on uh, one of these cap screws so be careful so that you're not losing your nuts down inside of the frame tubes all right after the fair lead it says route the cable through the fair lead attach the hook put the winch plate on free spool setting then manually free the cable and engage the winch clutch so I spooled enough out. I got the uh, winch stop on there and the hook on there. I had to actually pop this uh, metal part out of here to be able to feed it through this rubber thing. It'll probably tell me that in the instructions when I get around to reading the instructions for the winch. This is still for the uh, winch bracket came with the winch. So it looks like it's time to uh, start installing the solenoid and everything. So let me uh, get a grasp on that. All right, because of the location that I chose for the winch, I had to uh, swap cables. You're supposed to use the uh, blue and yellow going from the winch to the contactor, but I want to put the contactor on the other side of this bulkhead if I already mounted it. So uh, I'm going to use the uh, black and red ones that go for the battery here, and then I use the blue and yellow ones um, that are supposed to go from the battery to the contactor. I'm supposed to go... From the contactor to the winch, I use those for the for the contactor to the battery. So I mounted the uh, contactor kind of up high on the firewall towards the center. I put, plan on putting a glove box in there someday. I didn't want to uh, put this stuff in the way of the glove box, otherwise I would have mounted it over here behind the uh, the grab bar. And then I mounted the control for uh, the wireless remote next to the contactor. And then uh, I'll have to get a better picture later on. Later on, there it is. I mounted the uh, in out switch using uh, some hardware that I got with a Warren winch. They're made for a, for a steering wheel, for a steering bar. And I mounted the uh, switch up under the uh, dash on the left side so I could reach it from outside the cockpit. Also, the uh, switch I got with this Viper winch, the uh, the shroud on it, those two little plastic pieces that stick out on each side of the switch. One side of that was broken out of the package and I got absolutely no mounting hardware at all um, for the switch. That's why I had to borrow that, uh, that hardware out of a Warren winch that I had. Uh, I also had one of these nuts. It was uh, crimped pretty bad. I got it to go on, but it actually uh, somewhere in the manufacturing or something, it got damaged, but it was still used and sent to me. There's not a whole lot of mounting hardware that came with this uh, kit, so if you buy the uh, Viper winch, you're probably going to wind up spending a few uh, dollars on gas driving back and forth to the hardware store like I have. So I uh, rerouted a couple things. So I still got the uh, red and black coming off of uh, 
the went to go to the contactor, but I also ran the blue and yellow out of the floor, strapped it off. So it comes in the same hole now. Blue and yellow and the red and black all come in the same hole. Go over to the contactor. I'm trying to make sure that the ones that come from the battery, you can see them down there, uh, don't come in contact with uh, the drive shaft. I got the drive shaft there. So I strapped them off down here and then I strapped them off again uh, back underneath there, underneath the uh, seat belt boot. And then I fished them over to the battery. I don't know if I'm missing uh, some instructions or not, but uh, the remote that came with this winch uh, wasn't working earlier. Uh, this box over here has a winch receiver. And uh, on the next to the plug there, there's a little button. You can kind of see it there, that gray thing sticking up. So I, I pushed that button just out of curiosity, and then I used the remote, and then it seemed to work. So, like I said, I've got no instructions at all. I'm kind of wondering if I got uh, an open box or something. You know, the uh, contactor only had uh, three of the four washers on it and uh, everything. But um, everything seems to work now. There's a red wire that comes off of the switch harness, the mechanical switch harness. And I'm out of my switch over here on the other side of the steering column over there. So there's a, a black, a green, I think it is, and, and a red. And then there's a red wire that's tied into this yellow here. So you got the, the, the yellow and the red together. They go into a single red. And uh, from the instructions, from what I could tell, again, not, not very good instructions, all that should go into an accessory on uh, power source. So back here by... The back of the accessories plug, there was actually an extra wire. All right, it's the first time I've ever done uh, this process on a side by side. I've done it on uh, ATVs before, and there's normally two extra accessory wires on an ATV. Well, I found one here, so I tied into that, and then I tied uh, the other wire from the switch into that wire. All right, so that's the fuse. So I tied in the mechanical switch um, after the fuse. You know, I got the power source here going down and then the fuse and then I tied in there. So there's two splices there. One that ties the two reds together. Uh, one from the wireless remote and then one from the mechanical switch and then one that ties all that into the accessory uh, power on. All right, so now I'm to the point of just trying to uh, cable off um, all these extra wires, these wires are, are way too long, so I'm kind of bundling them all together and strapping them up underneath the dash. I've already started. I got the uh, the one for, for the mechanical switch already strapped up on the other side of the dash support there. So I need to strap all these up, and then I'll put it all back together, and it should all work. So, again, I switched the black and reds out for the blue and yellow. So blue is the positive, and then the... The yellow is the negative. Um, also on that uh, wireless remote, there are two black wires. All right, no explanation again. There's there's two black wires come off there. Obviously black should be ground from factory. So I tied it in to the contactor to the, the negative wire that's coming from the battery. So yellow is the negative on the battery. And again, it runs down and around and then up through the through a pre-existing hole in the firewall. All right, so that yellow, I just tied these two black wires in there. And again, these black wires are uh, way too long. So I need to bundle up all that extra, all the extra wire. So bundle up all the wire. I already tested it out, it works. So bundle up all the wire, strap it all off, and then start putting uh, everything back together. And uh, should be good to go. I got uh, most of the wires up and uh, started to strap off. We got a lot of tails to cut off still, but just a note here. I did find two wires that were part of the bundle that uh, seemed to be sealed off. And I'm guessing that those are for a wired remote, which is supposed to be an option with us. This one came with a wireless. I don't know why you'd want uh, a wired remote on top of the wireless, but, uh, but uh, just thought I'd let 
let anyone that looks at this know that uh, they weren't needed. All right, they're not needed for normal operation. So like I said, I need to finish strapping all this stuff up and uh, reassembling and I'll be good to go. All right, got the uh, drive shaft tunnel back on, the two seats back in, got it all put together. So turn the key on. Well, first try it without the key on. Doesn't do anything. Turn the key on. Out in works. I got the wireless remote. So apparently it's not gonna stay married. Out in So I had to uh, hit that button on top of the wireless receiver to get it to work again. I guess I have to contact Moto Alliance to see if that's supposed to be normal or not. Maybe that wire for that receiver is supposed to be always hot. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Anyhow, I'm done. It's installed. Give me a chance to use my new drill I got for myself for Christmas.